three, two, one, zero. All engines. Whether you've been married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Welcome to the Married in a Crazy podcast with Snicks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. I'm Snicks. And if you don't know who we are or what we're about, just want to give you some background on, um, I guess, our background. Background on the background. Background on the background. Right. So I am a a certified extreme execution life coach with an emphasis on marriage, as well as a certified disc coach and level one certified in the Gottman Method couples therapy training. (laughs) (laughs) And what about you? Well, I was going to, I thought you were going to say we both were, and then you threw in the, I am, I am, and the marriage and whatever. So I am Snooks. I am Snooks. And I am also a certified extreme execution coach. Um, I also have been married for 24 and a half years. That's probably the most important statistic of all. I also completed level one certification with the Gottman Institute. Right, right, right. And we're both in the process of going through level two Mm -hmm. as well. And all that, we we share all that because people always ask like, so how did you guys get started in this? Why? It's it's more than just a a podcast. It's a passion. Um, It's a calling. It's something that we've been, we feel as if we've been called to do because of the things that we've been through. Um, Sometimes when you go through the fire, you got to start teaching people or become a tour guide on how to get through the fire. Right. Um, And that's how we approach the married in a crazy podcast as well as married in a crazy coaching uh, and with the couples that and the individuals that we work with um so with that said welcome to the podcast so i'm gonna just say this right quick if if lovey starts um his for those of you that can see it if his eyes start kind of rolling in the back of his head or he starts you know how you do the you start getting sleepy and you put your hand the nod off yeah um, it's because he's still having some after effects of Jamaica. And it's so funny because I was talking to mom today and she's like, I am still so tired. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was, I'm going to sleep on time. Um, I got back and I felt like, oh, it's no big deal. You know, I, I feel fine. The last couple of days, it's like I hit a wall. It's like the, uh, the jet lag is like, starting to it was a lag time to catch up for you right it's like it's delayed it's crazy and even like last night and usually because i i have sleep apnea as well um it's a mild case but i still use the um the cpap CPAP. Mm -hmm. machine and you know i use the cpap whenever i wear that i mean i'm always like oh full energy the next day and wore that thing and still woke up tired (laughs) so i don't know it's just it's gonna it's a process y'all sometimes though let's just be real you don't go to bed as early as you probably should well, it's just, there's a lot to do. There's yeah, a lot to I do. Know, just like, you know, a lot of your relationships out there as you're listening, there's a lot that you're trying to accomplish in the day. And so, you know, it's just a matter of figuring out where it fits. Mm-hmm. And we should, we should have a podcast. Now. I'm actually getting ready to do the 168 tracker. It's one of those things that we do with our couples from time to time. If there's discussion about how there's just not enough hours in the day, there really are. There's 168 hours in a week. And there's a process by which we take people through accounting for that, doing a budget of your time, just like you would do your money. Mm -hmm. So I'm about to do that again. It's one thing to coach it, but you got to do it yourself as well. You practice what you preach, right? Amen. And you got to revisit it from time to time. Yeah, And that that, that right there is the thing. Um, Revisiting it, because just because I feel like sometimes someone says, well, I already told you that before. And it's like, okay, I'm so sorry that I need it again. You know, I wasn't trying to, I promise I swear that sounds like a day. I promise I wasn't trying to be, you know, I actually wasn't even thinking about you, but because you felt some kind of way about it. I was like, I told you 15 times. I'm so sorry. You need to yeah. tell me 16. And lovey is, oh my gosh. Anyway. Anyway, so. So I, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. So I wanted to, you know, just first of all, Thanks to everyone who wrote in about um, they saw their pictures and everything and just the comments that we received about our pictures from Jamaica. 
um, we actually got quite a few um, emails and I, I picked one out that I, I kind of. How do you do that? How do you decide which one you're going to read? I, I don't know. Is maybe it's just a, a feeling that I have to, oh, let me pick this one. I, I, I don't know. It's just kind of something that I okay. just picked it. And I'm just curious. I, I think it's, I think we should read each one of them and go back through and actually start sharing like the, uh, the reviews and stuff as well. So we, we need, I, I know, I, I think I he, mentioned it a couple of times that we're going to start doing that. We just never got around to it. So it's funny because he says we, but it's really not we. That's me. Okay, well, go for I'm it. I'm saying. Do your thing. Anyway, so I, I think this one stood out just because there was something that came about that reminded me of what this person was talking about. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to read this. Um, this is from Lee from the ATL says, hey, MIC, it sounds like Jamaica was a blast. And from the pics that you shared, you most definitely had fun. Happy belated B-Day to Lovey. What an amazing, I'm sorry, what an awesome way to bring in your birthday. Thank you guys for sharing your, your space with us. Jamaica is on my bucket list. But to be honest with you, my guy and I will probably fight the whole time we were there. LOL. Thanks again and be blessed. So, How are you going to say LOL after we're going to fight LOL? I fight the whole time. See, really? I'm sorry, Lee. <laughs> it sounds like he's judging. No, I'm not judging at all. It's like, there's nothing funny about you guys getting into an argument about going to paradise. No, I don't think that she was saying, oh, we're going to fight about going there. But, you know, sometimes we have arguments. Sometimes we have conflicts. And let's just be real. We had a couple arguments while we were there, too. I don't remember. Lovey going to say he don't remember. And it, it is funny. I don't remember exactly what they were about. There were some disagreements or some, you know. Oh, there was a couple any. regarding the kids. Well, not even just about the kids. It's just Lovey has a tendency to, he wants to be in control. <laughs> wow. He's just going to put me on blast. Okay. So I do know that there was a couple of times where <laughs> it wasn't really an argument, but I, I do remember distinctly that. There were some things that didn't quite go the way that mm -hmm. I thought they should have or the way that they were supposed to. And nothing against Beaches. Beaches was phenomenal. But there were a couple of times where everyone in our group received communication from Beaches, but oh, it missed oh, us. Oh, and yeah. we were like the ones that... <laughs> it's got the original trip. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that set it up. And it was like, we had other people telling us, oh, this is happening at this time. And this is where we're supposed to be. And this is what time we're supposed to have our, like our COVID test and what time the bags are getting picked up. And we're like, we have no communication. So we had to keep going back to the concierge. We're like, where's your information? Oh, I'm sure they're going to drop it off. It never showed up. It never showed up. So there was a couple times I kind of got outside of myself and Snicks is there like, calm down, calm down. Yeah. That, and, and, and I totally get it. I promise I do. Because it is frustrating when we've we've gone we're like oh you know we were looking for this information they're like oh yeah it's been it's been sent out to the rooms or blah 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 whatever and at there was a couple of times when that explanation was like okay supposed to be okay we're supposed to be appeased by it and I'm like okay well I'm here now so you could just give me the info you know and the one guy he was he was like okay <laughs> I was like I'm sorry I'm right here so please just tell me he's very nice and everything but he did tell us and so I was still looking for the information um we never received it so I don't know if they, they called the courier back and be like hey I already told them you don't need to give them paper no that's not what happened no I'm, I'm just saying this as a result being facetious about it but there was we what we had to do that three times three times so? but everyone else in our um in our group they all got their papers and they got 14 other human beings <laughs> got contacted and our group, the case and group, right? But not the cases. Not the cases. It was a trip. Well, not this set of cases because we had oh, right. two other rooms that had cases on it. But anyway, no. But I mean, th there's ways to resolve conflict, though. Even when you're on vacation, just because you're in paradise doesn't mean everything goes perfect. And I think everyone needs to realize that it's not always going to be, you know, ideal. Um, and it's not that you don't have conflict. I mean, before we've always said that. Um, conflict is inevitable, but combat is optional. Optional. Yeah. So I, I just kind of want to, um, and I, I think this came up because someone else I, I talked to, not necessarily this week, but 
maybe like last week or so, we kind of had a conversation about um, issues that keep coming up in their relationship and like old arguments or, or mm. whatever. <clears throat> so there was a couple of things, you know, that we kind of, that we kind of talked about. And one thing is that sometimes if it's, if it's something that is coming up, it can be like an old wound or something, right? but you feel like you never receive closure from it. So maybe that's, that's one thing you need to sit and have a conversation just so that you can get closure from the thing that is still bothering you. Not saying that it's going to. I was going to say, but what if you don't actually get the closure because it's, it's beyond solving. Not every problem. Well, no, I, I, I'm going to get there. Okay. Oh, okay. There. Calm down. I'm just sit here and stay in my lane. Go Whatever. Ahead. No, I'm just saying like, okay, let me just go there. Like lovely was saying, um, not all, uh, all conflicts will be resolved. And there is a study that shows that 69% of conflicts are perpetual, which is they seem to go on and they're never ending. So you think about that 69%, that's a high number versus 31% that are, you know, they're resolved or whatever. So don't think that if you're in a situation where we keep fighting about the same thing or it, it, it just keeps going, um, keeps going on and on and on, um, you're in, you're in a, a losing crowd or should I say you're in a small pool? No, you're with good company. I should say great company because 69% is a high number to have issues or conflicts that are never resolved. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, that's greater than two thirds of the comp of, of the couples that are out there that are having issues or challenges. Um, some stuff just continues to resurface. Mm -hmm. And it's not that people are being ignorant and you know, refusing to work on it. It's just that some things, what was just the word you use? It's perpetual, perpetual, that they're they are not perpetual. ending. They're um, never, they're never changing. And so the trick is not to, I don't know, try and fix it right there. <laughs> she just kicked me. I'm sorry. I'm still in your thunder. Go ahead. Do your thing. <laughs> Go on. I'm, not, I'm, I was, I'm, I'm back not, in my lane. <laughs> Look, let me, let me just, let me, I keep trying to drive. I'm that little Yugo that's actually trying to actually get in the fast lane. And then the car behind me oh keeps saying, gosh. get, get back in your lane. So now You're I'm, so I'm driving two no, lanes over. Lovey. I'm back in the slow lane. Let's cut it out. Stop it. Cause we're going to go there, but I just wanted lane. to touch on a couple of things right quick. So one beep, thing, beep. who's got the keys to the G anyway. Okay. Anyway. So sometimes, um, we don't circle back that that's part of not being able to have closure, not being, you don't circle back to solve the problem. Um, you guys, if, 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 if there's a resolution, try to come up with um, a concrete plan to where you can both honestly on something that you can both honestly agree with and see if that will work. You know, it's not just, I'm going to solve it and I'm okay with it, but lovey's still struggling with it. We have to, it has to be the both of us. We have to agree on how to move about getting this plan underway, <clears throat> excuse me, or trying to gain some closure so that we're not having the same argument over. Okay. Doesn't mean that it's not going to happen, but I'm just saying these may be ways that you're able to work toward that. And sometimes, you know, you have an argument. It's funny because I think a lot of couples probably do this. Um, there's fuel to the argument. You start by talking about one thing and then the next thing you know, it escalates to something else because you keep bringing up the past things that happened in the past. So, and, and you use that, it's like you're setting precedent, like you're in a courtroom. Well, you did this on this, blah, blah, blah. You're introducing other things just to make your point. And we need to make sure that um, we're not doing that. So these are just, these could just be some ways where you may be able to resolve the conflict not saying that it's going to happen, but those are just some of my suggestions. So you can um, talk about the, the sometimes how the conflicts doesn't, what you were trying to say in the first place, I guess, before I kicked you. I had permission. I now. didn't even kick him, people. I just want you to know that. She did. I totally didn't kick you. You, you hit the chair. Okay, the so chair hit my leg. All, that's a kick. Sort of. Anyway, <laughs> no, but I don't even know what I was going to say. <laughs> now I'm like completely forgotten. 
<laughs> but one of the things I, I think so is funny. that be sure you're arguing about the right thing. I mean, mm-hmm. you could, okay, so Lee made the comment about, you know, like her and her, um, is she married? Is it her boyfriend? Mm-hmm. Or is she it just her, said my guy. My guy. Um, that's something that we would argue about or what have you, but make sure there's a process. We've talked about rules of engagement in the past. Make sure that if there's going to be a challenge or whatever, even if it's in jest, even if it's in joking, that you guys are talking about the same thing. You're on the same page. Mm, yeah. Because there's a lot of times where you're having an argument and we're talking about something in particular, but we have completely different perceptions of what we're talking about. Right. The thing is not really the thing that we're arguing about. Right. And, and I can just, if you will, go ahead, allow me. I'm back I can give lane. you, wow. I will give you an example of um, something that Lovey and I, we had to overcome. He's telling all my business. I said, Lovey and I, me too. We but why is it always to- something I do? I didn't say you did it. Just wait for it. Okay. Oh, you guys, wait for it. <laughs> you participated. So, whatever. Wait for it. So, Lovey and I, one of our uh, our conflicts, it's centered around money. Hmm. So what we what we were doing was, and you know, being honest, we we would argue about money. So before we argued about it, I want to say before we argued about it, we had to learn actually before we had the argument, we should have learned what money really meant to the each of us, to both of us. So it wasn't until we both got an understanding of what money meant to me and what money meant to him. So for me, money meant freedom. I could go do what I want to do. Um, bills are paid, whatever. So now I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy that. And it wasn't necessarily I'm buying clothes or whatever. I was buying stuff for Everything. the house. <laughs> yeah, I was. You're right. But for Lovey, money didn't wasn't a freedom type of thing. It gave you freedom. But for him, can you want me to tell you? Go ahead. Keep for him, it. money meant security. So when he had money, he didn't feel like, I want to say when he had money, when we had money and it was in the bank and there, or wherever it was being invested, he felt like he wasn't drowning, you know, even though we were sitting nice, I'm like, why are you tripping? And he was like, what do you mean? Because this, 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 whatever. And I was like, oh my gosh, I work every day, blah, blah, blah. Even when I wasn't working, I ain't going to say that. I, <laughs> I do, but I was working outside of the home. Even when I was working in the home, I'm still working. Let's just be clear. But I had a different understanding of it. Like, why can't I go do this? Or why can't I? And how come you just can't enjoy? And how come, why is it always, a, you know, a, a fight with you? So when I understood though, ah, uh, this is what money means to him. Money means security. So I learned how to yield in that and it, you know a lot of people are like well i don't feel like i should have to well okay it's it's every person's has their you you don't have to feel like you have to do it and and let's just be clear also yielding is not losing who you are you know a lot of times i think we misunderstand what the word yielding means that means that i lose out and it's just all him no we both go Sometimes the one person goes first, like you broke that down before talking about how a person yields or how we yield as a couple together. True. It's just like when you're driving in a car where it's, you know, if you're, if you're on the road and you're in a turning lane and it's that yield where you're making that right. And the oncoming traffic has the right of way. It's not that you're saying, okay, only you get to go. And I'm just going to stay in this lane perpetually and just be stuck (laughs) here. No, it's like that other person goes, and then you merge into that lane and then you're able to continue your path. It's not that you aren't able to continue your path. They're able to do the things that you want. It's just that sometimes you just have to yield the right away. And there's other times when you're driving where the other traffic has to yield the right away as well, but it allows everyone to still reach their destination, you know, um, albeit maybe a few seconds differently than, than each other. And when you're talking about the money, it was, I, I distinctly remember us having conversations and there were so many aha moments that came up because we, I mean, for years, y'all, we were arguing about money for years. Years. That wasn't the, the thing that put us over the top when it came to Snooks asking for a divorce. No, it had four. absolutely nothing to do with that. Nothing money. to do with that. Mm-mm. But it was a point of contention for many years after that. Um, but a lot of it came down to the way that we felt. We each had these personal stories in history with, for us, it was money. You know, Snooks, of course, you said that it's it's about freedom for her. For me, it was security and a sense of well-being. Um, to this day, and it's crazy, you know, even where we are in our, in our lot in life right now, 
I still have a bit of a twinge or I don't know what you want to call it, a cringe uh, when I use the ATM card mm -hmm. because of the way I was conditioned when I was young, um, even early in our marriage. You know, if anybody's ever gone to the bank or used their ATM card or whatever, and they go to the store and it's denied, that happens to you enough times, uh, whether in your youth or, or in your early adulthood, for me, at least, that was like the worst thing possible. And it happened enough to where I was like, Ugh. so even now, when I know that there's, there's no chance that it's, it's going to get denied, it's almost like when the police pull up behind <laughs> you and you know, you're doing everything right, but there's still a little bit of, okay, the hair's up on the back of my neck. Like I'm, I gotta, there's just, this is this hesitancy or this, this anxiety that goes along with it. And so for me, the more we have invested, the more that we have set up for the future, whatever makes me feel that much better. And it seemed to me that you were like spinning, 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 spinning. And it was like, oh, you have no concern for our future. That's what I got. But that was never articulated. That's not what I said. Like, oh, you're spending money like we have no future. It was like, why are you spending money? And you're like, oh, we got the money. Why are you being tightwad? And it was just, and it went back and forth until we got to what was behind the conversation, what the true meaning of it was. And, and I guess we're saying all this because it's just an offshoot of Lee's email, but do you have things in place to where you can find out what the meaning is behind the discussions or the arguments or the challenges or the conflict that you're having? So I think a lot of times that's something that needs to be considered. And I know it's difficult when you're in the heat of the battle. It should be, okay, um, what exactly are we talking about right now? Where's the challenge at? Good. No, I, I agree with that. Um, you were going in so good. I, I lost my place, my place now. <laughs> no, and I, and I think that's something that needs to be thought of. And I know you had a bunch of notes and some statistics and all that stuff. Well, no, I just was writing some things down. But like you said, it's very important that we keep the thing the thing. You know, um, I think in sometimes in anger, maybe we lose sight of the thing. And we start just kind of you this, you that, point fingers, you know, it's okay to be angry, but we cannot let anger um, get so out of control, where it's like, now is about the last man standing, you know, no, I'm going to say have the last word, no, I'm going to have the last word, and we just kind of. Oh, now we're in the octagon, it's like, oh, no, no, only one of us is getting out alive. <laughs> exactly, you know, we can't let it, we can't say, oh, just, what is that? Uh, reasoning and and when I'm when I'm on level 10 there's no reasoning for me you know if my emotions get too out of whack I know there is no reasoning with her when the emotion is flowing hold on now you make it sound like that's a thing I'm keeping the main thing the main <laughs> thing no I mean but but it's true I mean but, but recognizing that we need to know what that is and sometimes you know and Lee and I, I don't even know that's a problem for just a LOL. First off, we do appreciate your email. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, Lee. We appreciate you. But it's but it's one of those things too. If you're serious about how oh, okay, well, there's there's consistent arguing, what have you, I'm gonna beckon to everyone out there to have a safe word. Hmm. You Do know, we have a safe word. Um, that's when I call you out your name. <laughs> and, no, no. No, not at all. No, no. No, we, you know, we talk about it. We, remember, we talked about this the we other did. day Yeah. about how every couple should have a, a word. Mm -hmm. Let, let's say it's okay. You know, everybody knows my, my favorite team. Well, maybe you don't know, but it's Pittsburgh Steelers. So, and I'm just using this as an example, or, or let's say the word volleyball. You guys know that I, I was a volleyball coach for a long time, that if things are just getting completely out of hand and I need to come down several levels, that Snooks would have the license just to say, Hey, volleyball. Just throw it, it's like a safe word. You put that out there and that's just a trigger to let you know that, okay, I've crossed the line. Mm -hmm. No matter how angry I am, no matter how bad things are and how much I want to get this point across, no, forget that. No, volleyball you. And then, you know, and, no, you got to just sit there and go like, okay, the agreement is if that word is invoked and this, there's trust involved here because mm -hmm. you can't just be like, every time you don't want to hear what the person has to say, you can't just be like, oh, volleyball. What do you want to eat? Well, I want to eat, nope, volleyball. I, I want, no, you gotta, it's gotta be something to where it's, it's, it's reserved only for those extreme moments where somebody is about to cross a line or somebody has crossed a line or some, you see it escalating and going in a direction that it should, because it's going to be detrimental to your relationship. So I think that everybody should come up with a word, not a phrase, 
because you can get a few digs in if you're trying to say a phrase. So it's like, I'm just going to use the scripture. I'm gonna, okay, some scriptures are a little long. Unless the scripture is Jesus wept, you might want to just re reduce it to one word. Right. That's true. I agree with that. And it's so funny too, because I, like I said, I asked you, do we have a safe word? And I'm trying to, I'm trying to imagine myself, I'm in full transparency here. I'm trying to imagine if we had a, a, um, a word, how I would use it or how I would um, react to you using it. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, imagine that. It's like stealers. I'm like, I don't care about those stealers. <laughs> well, I can see it now. I can see it now. You'd be like grandma. You'd be like grandma. Like, I don't care about that book. I don't care what that book says. And we're talking about the Bible. We were trying to counsel my grandmother way back <laughs> when she was talking Ooh. about somebody. And I was like, okay, grandma, come on, calm down, calm down. Look, let's yeah. think about what the Bible says. Boy, I don't care what that book says. Well, in all honesty, this, it, you know, it, it, we can laugh about it now, but this this happened the very next day after um, Ernest's mother had passed away. True. And grandma was, you know, of course, that was she her. She was on one. That was her oldest. And yeah, she sat in that chair and we were just trying to talk about um, feelings and, uh, you know, overcoming certain things. And Ernest Lovey was like, <clears throat> well, grandma, you know, you know, the Bible says she said, I don't care what that book say. I wanted to fall on the floor and laugh because I love, 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 love me some Lula. And grandma was so serious. She was sitting by the window and she looked at him like, boy, if you come over here, I'll slap you. She said, I don't care what that book say. Like she was ready to get down. It was the funniest thing, but you know. And that's exactly how you would be. If I'm sitting there saying what whatever the word is, we could be talking about whatever, finances, whatever. And I could just see it now and be like, oh, volleyball. And I can see you throwing some expletives after that. F volleyball. No. Right now, this is what I want. Mm. No. I don't know. Stunks is a firecracker. No, Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Made me snort. Look, you are. It's like, okay, look, we've been, there's only been two times in, our, in these 24 years where it was like, Look, she about to burn. She about to kill to everybody say, in the house. I, I think that I could count on one hand the times that I, times. I went ballistic. We're, we're talking like seeing red, oh, get yeah, all was, sharp objects away ballistic. from her. I went ballistic. I, I'll keep it real. There are two times. I, yeah. So anyway, why are you just putting all my business out there like that? Wow. Equal opportunity business. E wow. Okay. So basically it's quid pro quo quid pro quo pretty much wow okay anyway so kind of like lovey was saying um if you establish that safe word though make sure that you guys utilize it don't be like how i'm trying to picture myself being saying you don't care about the word because the word is there for a reason and you know we don't ever want emotions to get the best of what the good intentions you know right because sometimes you know like i said it's okay to be angry because anger is something that's going to happen but there are things that we should not do when we're angry one is um listen make sure that i'm not criticizing you you know because i'm just throwing digs at you don't criticize when you're angry because you tend to hurt people's feelings and <clears throat> sometimes you say certain things that you may not be able to come back from um, shutting down, you know, we, we have, um, that's one thing that I think there's couples that do that. They just sh totally shut down and they shut other people out. I'm, I'm not going to hear anything. You, you're talking to me and I'm just like, mm, I don't have nothing to say. And then I'm asking you a question or and you're at, you're ignoring me or you just totally shut me out. That for me, it's almost like an, it's an escalation. Now you want me to just get down where I get mad at, you know? Well, there's several things. It's not That's just, just me though. Well, it's the truth. I mean, but there's things that happen. There's, you know, like John Gottman calls them the four horsemen, but there's different things that, that can occur within a relationship. You know, do you even remember what they are? Yeah. Defensive. You're talking about the, yeah, the four horsemen, uh, defensiveness, um, contempt. Mm hmm I said, criticize, criticize and stone criticism and sto criticism. Yeah, criticism and stonewalling. Yeah, you know, and, and if, if you get if you're in a situation where there's these things can be extremely poisonous to your relationship, mm -hmm. where you're criticizing each other too much, or you feel like oh no, I didn't really criticize, but you're taking digs at them. That's criticizing. <laughs> you know, having contempt, not really giving a rip what the other person is saying, or making them feel as if what they have to say has no value. Yeah. 
you know, and then you're looking at uh, always being defensive, you know, it's like, it's never your fault. It's, it's like, you never had any, you didn't contribute to whatever is going on right now. So it's not me. Oh, no, that's you. That's or it's always about what the other person did, not what you did. And then the shutting down like you were just talking about. Or even the other part about being defensive. It's like when you say something, I'm immediately like, no, no, no. you know, it's like a, I can't ever just be you can't ever I can't ever be wrong. I always have to be right about everything. So I'm going to state my case. Every every room is a courtroom. You know, it's right. like it, that's not necessary because that that doesn't help anything because in my mind I'm going to share this I work with someone who's like that and in the very first time I'm like mm, I ain't even going to talk to that person just because I already know I'm sorry I'm not even going to talk to that person because I already know how the conversation is going to go it's going to end the same way they're going to defend whatever it is that they did and they will continue to defend themselves until I agree with them or I'd be like can you stop talking about it you know so that's a whole different issue so we need to make sure that we're not doing that in our relationships. And if you recognize that you are doing it, pause. Mm -hmm. it, it's so funny. It's just like public speaking. People think that they always got to say, um, and, uh, and, uh, see, and all these filler words, same thing in our relationships when mm -hmm. we're, we're having these discussions and we're having, um, arguments, conflict challenges. You think you got to fill that dead space. You know, it's, it's called a pregnant pause. Just be quiet. Let your mind catch up to your mouth. <laughs> because a lot of times when we get in trouble is when we just let the mind go, the mouth is running, running, running. The mouth is like five miles ahead of your mind. You don't even realize what you said because it just, bah, it just came out. You just, you know, verbally vomited all over the person because you just, you were there emotionally. There's okay for times you can sit there and you're right in the middle of a sentence, a conversation, what have you, and you just go, Take a three second deep breath and be like, do I, do I really want to say this? Do I really want to go there? Hmm. And then let your mind, and when they say, what's wrong with you now? You got nothing to say. And that's what happens usually. You got nothing to say? What's, what? You, you lost it? You don't. I'm, I'm sorry. What was the body language in the, the fingers and the neck? And what is that? I'm doing that my daughters. Some, that was somebody. Okay. Got you. I'm doing my daughters. Go ahead. Proceed. And, uh, no, but when that happens, don't let that, that don't let that draw you back in. You just got to sit there and be like, okay, you know what? Yeah, I just want to pause. Let's volleyball. just pause, right? Volleyball. <laughs> yeah, that is not the word, by the way. Just so you know. I know you already said it's Steelers. No, it's not that either. Oh, okay. it's not. Okay, I'll come with something completely different. So I know you're serious. I would be serious. No, I know because if we say volleyball, then the girls will be like, what? What volleyball? Volleyball? What? Oh, something just us. Yeah, got it. Got so it. So anyway, so one thing like. We kind of started out with talking about just how did the conflict, you know, conflict is inevitable. Combat is optional. optional. So one thing that um, we want to, I want to say to whomever. Um, not just do, you, Lee. Not, yeah, not just you, Lee. Thanks for the um, email. But, you know, Lovey and I, we, we, we talked about being uh, extreme execution coaches, but they were also uh, certified in the level one Gottman, <clears throat> excuse me, method, we are also relationship coaches. And one thing that we can do and that we offer is, you know, our coaching. And within our coaching, we can give you tools to help build your relationship. Um, we help you to address uh, reoccurring or new issues. And, you know, you learn how to talk about the specific things, not just you know, help, help you to talk about how, I'm sorry, help you to learn how talking about things specifically, how that helps and give you some tools for the ability to move on and not stay stuck. Yeah. You know, and then really focus on the main thing to help you dig and peel back the, the layers of the onion to the, those different layers to get to the center of what truly is the challenge. So like when we were talking about, even us talking about our finances, we'll help give you some resources and some tools to help you peel back to the point where it's like, okay, we're not just talking about money. We're talking about, you know, freedom and safety mm -hmm. and how we address those things to make sure that you can still have a sense of freedom and I can still have a sense of safety, mm -hmm. but uh, right. Or security. And then we're able to make sure that once we found that we'll know exactly what we're talking about, then we can resume our conversation and create a, a methodology or a way that we can spend money without 
attacking either of those those um, core needs, right? Right. And the other part of our coaching is, um, as you learned today on today's podcast, you learn how to stay in your lane when you're supposed to be in the slow lane. And when, you know, the other person wants to go in the fast lane and that you just don't, you don't pull over and you're driving 55 miles an hour and get in front of the person going 80, you know, you just. First of all, no, no, no. if you're watching this on YouTube, you could clearly see that I did not move at all. So I do, I could not kick you. The parts you cannot see. So I got extra appendages. You kicked me. You got legs and everything. You kicked me. Anyway. Hey, this is the part. Hey, thank you for actually participating today. We kind of just kind of shot from the hip a little bit um, based on that email. But what I want to do at this point is like we always do, use the I can can for couples. This is where we use the affirmations. If you're looking at YouTube, you can see Sorry, the can. Let's put the can up there in everybody's face. Those 40 different affirmations where we talk about the little things that make a difference in your relationship. So we pull one every single week. I pull for one of the people in the couple. She pulls for the other people in the couple. I can leave a note saying, I love you. I can be more understanding. Nice. Okay. So these are things that you want to do throughout the week. Mm -hmm. You can also do it like that's the way we're using it, but you can also use it once a day and just keep cycling through and just shaking up the can and using it, just spicing things up a little bit. So that way you stay focused on the little things. You string enough of these little things together consistently and they turn into big wins. Mm -hmm. And that's what all, that's all a relationship is, is doing the little things well and consistently so that your partner always feels loved and appreciated. Yes. So with that said, so I will love a love note. You might get one. (laughs) They're going to be checking in. Snooks, did he send you that love note? Mm -hmm. Please, y'all, make sure that you keep lovey honest. Oh, when I was doing all this, that's my sister. Okay, Okay. net. Uh, Anyway. uh, That was not Shell. Oh, no, Shell will cut you. Uh, (laughs) Literally, she's a doctor. She will cut you. Yeah. Until the next time, stay blessed. Okay, bye-bye.